<laughs> Welcome to the Strange Findings Podcast. I'm Frank. And I'm Ray. 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 I was going to introduce. I mean, Sorry. I'm still used to introducing everybody else, but Ray McGuff. Um, Hi. I've got a little bit of a throat issue you can hear. Uh, I was sick, <laughs> and I still am a little sick. <clears throat> yeah. But um, he has something. I think it's HIV AIDS. But. I think it's herpes. <laughs> Does that affect your throat? Herpes? I think it does gonosyphilitis. <laughs> um, no, we, we haven't done this show for a really long time. No. Um, I've actually had these notes for probably a month. We, we, we were talking about doing the show. Right, uh, right. Last month, yeah. And uh, never got around to doing it. Um, it snowed. But, yeah. <laughs> but here we are again. And uh, I say we start with you and uh, Ray's findings. All right. Ray's findings. Ray's, Ray's raspy findings. Ray's findings. <laughs> Beep pop boop a doop doo. <laughs> this just in, Frank. Are you familiar with Alabama? Of course I am. All right, it's terrible there. This is a, <laughs> a, a little small town in Alabama. A carnival worker was arrested after butt dialing his friend while having sex with the friend's dog. Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> in Alabama, it's recorded that Russell Joseph Myers, fifty-four, was arrested by his. Uh, was arrested uh, and reported by his best friend for bestiality. Apparently, he butt-dialed himself having sex with his friend's German Shepherd. Uh, the friend immediately called the police when he realized what was going on. I don't know how you recognize your dog in a scenario like that. Right, yeah, how do you know that's what's <laughs> going know? on? But, I mean, I guess maybe it's from the... Is bar- that my dog? Is that my dog? <laughs> it's the same sound it makes when I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so, anyways... Um, Cops go, they catch the guy, they arrest him. Uh, He's charged with bestiality, which in Alabama, uh, if you're convicted of that, you have to be registered like a sex offender. You should be. Police said, this was my favorite part of the article. Police (laughs) said that the man also had a chihuahua, but it was left unharmed. So you know what that says? The guy's racist. (laughs) Is he racist? He only fucks Germans. Oh. I thought it was like a, he only likes the big, was it a male or female? It didn't say. It didn't specify. So that's uh, that's how one. I was just I was blown away. I was like, this has all the makings of a feature film. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, there's they, people love dog movies. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you just get what you do is you get John Travolta to voice one. Yeah, uh, of the dog. Kirstie Alley do the other. No, no, uh, Bruce Willis. Mm. <clears throat> like yeah. who's talking style? Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, get them back together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look who's not talking. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah. We seem to talk about bestiality a lot when we t- get People, together for this. Uh, when you go to Google you know, <laughs> odd or funny stories, there's a lot of sex with animals yeah. going on. It's weird. Not, it's not funny to be a drunk anymore, but it is still really funny to fuck animals. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> I, I don't find it funny, but... but yeah, uh, It's very serious. Yeah, it's very serious. <laughs> for the dog especially. Yeah. He's just sitting there. He's just sitting there. What's this guy doing? Well, that doesn't... <laughs> Is he going to brush me? Is he going to brush me with that? My dog is so stupid. I can't even, it, I can't even imagine what it would think yeah. I was doing yeah. if I tried to fuck it. Yeah. You know, like if I was like, eh, come, come here. Come here a minute. Like, just how do you get over here? Yeah. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Right. <laughs> the, it stops and goes, whoa. <laughs> there's, there's definitely a moment where that animal realizes, Listen, this is not... I took your beef jerky toy, <laughs> but that wasn't an invitation. <laughs> this is not just playing around. Yeah. You know. This tug of war sucks. <laughs> wow. It's a, a lot, lot of tug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a different kind of balls you're playing with there, buddy. Yeah. Um, let's move into your next story, Ray. All right. Beep, 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 do. This just in. Uh, Arkansas. Are you familiar with Arkansas? Another A yeah. state? Another terrible one? Another terrible <laughs> state? Uh, this headline caught me because uh, I was like, why is this a headline? I have to read this story. Right. Because it says, woman steals $144 worth of makeup from local convenience store. That makes sense. And I was like, well, who cares? You know, that, why would this be a funny time. news story, right? That kind of shit happens yeah. every day. So I click on it. And here's, here's why it was crazy. Police arrested her. Uh, as the jewelry counter lady told the police, she didn't just put the, the makeup in her pockets or in an orifice. No, no, no. 
She spent hours applying $144 worth of makeup to her face. Why? Walking around the store and applying it as much as she could. She looked like a clown in the picture I saw. That doesn't even make sense. And then was trying to escape the store. Like, with all of that, <laughs> hundreds of dollars of makeup. Oh, my God. that's you. People need to interview her. Like, yeah, what? what her mission was. Because maybe she thought she was getting, like, this one's for today. Yeah. This, and, and this one's for tomorrow. Right. Like, I can blot this later and leave a nice blue. <laughs> yeah. Wash the layer off, and then there's another. They said that they were alerted after a uh, employee... White had been walking around to lunch and an hour later walked around to lunch back. <laughs> well, yeah, and the person's so. still applying makeup at the test counter. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing about that is there are people that like when you work in a retail situation that do come in and do weird shit. Yeah. And I can totally see that happening. The, the store I work at, there was a woman that used to come in and she never bought anything. But what she, her reason for coming in the store was she would use the body sprays. And she would use like three, like oh, too much of it, like in a bunch of different kinds, all kinds. Right. So you'd go in and you'd see her like browsing the store, but you knew where she was going to end up. Yeah. And you knew what she wanted. Uh, so you eventually see her over there and she just spray herself once. And then she'd go around the store and then she'd go back and spray herself again. <laughs> and eventually it would smell so bad in there that you'd be like, your eyes would start to burn a little bit. <laughs> it, it, there are mentally disturbed people all over. Uh, and yeah. they go into stores all the time. <laughs> yeah. They're just so loose. <laughs> that's the, the police came and were like, uh, you know, because she was trying to leave the store yeah. after applying all of that. And they were like, yeah, that's a, that's a crime. You were stealing. So I got to see this picture. Yeah. If you got to find the picture. <laughs> so that was that. <clears throat> it just caught me off guard because it's one of those stories where you're like, what? wait a second. Why is this news? And right. it was something crazy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Um, on to the next and final story. Right. <clears throat> boop, boop, boop. <laughs> this just in. Hawaii. Familiar with Hawaii, Frank? Yeah, it seems like a nice place, though. It, it seems like a, a nice place, but there seems like, there's just too much weather there. Right. Like Probably I, a lot of mess. I know I'm going to die, but I don't want to die by a crushing blow to the head yeah. from a tree limb. Well, it's, it's too with, windy. The island was <laughs> created by a volcano. True. So, like, when you know that fact. Uh, yeah. Should you live there? Probably yeah. not. It's a, it's chancy. That's it's one I'm of those. Saying. It's one of those uh, places that people live. That I go. Why do you live there? Yeah, like Washaway Beach. <laughs> yeah, Washaway Beach. Floodplains, New York. Fucking Tornado Alley. <laughs> New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans in general. Anywhere in New Orleans. Yeah. But anyway, so Hawaii has this problem uh, right now with this. There is a uh, invasive acid spring ants. Oh wow! Yeah, and they're indigenous to that island. To this particular island in Hawaii, but they for a long time the reason you haven't heard of them is because for a long time they're almost extinct. Something now in our, our climate cycle has exploded their population to levels that nobody remembers. Wow. Well, what what's happening? It says invasive acid spring ants deform baby chicks. Oh wow! There's a, a seabird chick uh, with seabirds in this area. Um, I forget the name of them. There was a uh, term for them, but. They nest on the ground. So these ants are getting in their nests, and when the babies are hatching, they're crawling all over them, like sniffing them for mites and whatnot. Like but they're mother. burning their like wings and eyes out and shit. Wow. And so like there's all these weird deformed birds right now. And they're they seems don't know about right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, we should probably have deformed birds at this point. Yeah, it says officials are working with local wildlife conservatives to try to figure out a way to stop this from happening, but nobody knows exactly well, no, how to deal with it. Because we deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we deserve deformed birds. We deserve terrible things to happen to us. Like, and it's going to happen. It's going to continue to could happen. Could you imagine that tourist area, too? Because it's Hawaii. So like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, where are we going? Oh, we're going to Retarded Bird Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hawaii just turns into yeah. the worst place. Just a bunch of birds... <laughs> They can't fly and they're running around going, I want meat now. There's <laughs> a bunch of poxy birds. Yeah. Uh, the, and then all their all their beautiful wildlife just dies. Yeah. There's just acid a- a- ants <laughs> everywhere. And then also volcano lava. Yeah. So you can't win. You can't win there. <laughs> that place sucks. <laughs> um, shit. Well, let's move into my findings for this episode. Um, Frank's findings. Let's take a little trip to Missouri. You, you, are you familiar with Missouri? I have. I've driven through there. Uh, 
Um, Beautiful country. This is coming out of Anderson, Missouri. Uh, police raid home for meth and also find dead bald eagle. <laughs> so, uh, the police in Anderson, Missouri searched two homes on Tuesday. They see- seized 58 grams of methamphetamines, a gun, a stolen ATV, and a stolen ho- horse trailer. Oh, and something else. A dead bald eagle. <laughs> The bizarre discovery came after the Ozarks Drug Enforcement Team, the McDonald County Sheriff's Office, and the Anderson Police Department served two search warrants simultaneously to the houses, according to fourstatehomepage.com. McDonald County Sheriff uh, Michael Hall, Michael Hall from Dexter, I assume. Oh, yeah, Michael C. <laughs> yeah, said, said the dead bald eagle was found in a freezer in one of the homes and turned over to an agent of the Missouri Department of Con- Conservation. It is a federal crime to kill a bald eagle or a golden eagle. Uh, living or dead, it is also illegal to possess one. Right. So, he said it is still unknown how the dead eagle came to roost in the freezer as the suspect of the home was not there during the search. Um, authorities arrested 65-year-old James Kivett for outstanding warrants in Newton County and charges are pending for the items recovered in the house. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, wh- what, do you, what do you think happened? Why do you think there was an eagle there? Because I, I have a theory about it. I have no idea. Like from that story, <laughs> I was just sitting here stunned through the whole thing. Like I don't know what I think. Say. I think that the kind of person who has fifty-eight grams of methamphetamines in their house, right, is exactly the kind of guy that would shoot an eagle, right? Like, yeah. Like you got to see. He's like, wow! <laughs> and he just jumps. And he sees it, gets his gun. <laughs> It probably falls out of the top of the bed. You oh, know, yeah. It's got one of those things. <laughs> he's got one of those emergency bed, yeah. bed gun things. Sees it on a roost, shoots it, get, jumps and runs around his yard. <laughs> he's going to mount it. Oh, I yeah. guess. You know? He's definitely going to have sex with it. <laughs> he <probably> definitely. <laughs> yeah. you? That's the most American thing you can do, right? Yeah. I just thought that I was love America, right? funny. Like, I, I picture, like, there is a sort of American meth dealer. Like, oh, yeah. Like, like he's proud to be an American. Yeah, he, he sells meth, drink, <laughs> drinks Coors Light. He probably has a tattoo of an eagle already. He probably even going to jail. He's probably he's so patriotic that he's probably yeah. like, oh yeah, God bless America. This is just right. I was breaking the law. Fuck yeah, I shot that eagle. Yeah, you know I shot that eagle because if I eat that meat, yeah. I become even more patriotic. I take it sold. I've watched it. <laughs> I TV. take it straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, uh, here's a let's let's move into Maine here. Uh, alleged burglar breaks into house to watch TV, convinces homeowner to give him a ride. Uh, a homeowner in Maine received a surprise visitor at his Waterboro home on su- Sunday afternoon, but it definitely wasn't Santa. This was around Christmas time. <laughs> I, I get that. The police in New York <laughs> County said the man opened the door of his house only to find an intruder watching television and wearing some of his clothes. You oh. know, like you do. Uh, in addition, the trespasser also also helped himself to the homeowner's food and took a shower. Uh, Derek Tarbox, the 35-year-old alleged burglar, somehow convinced the homeowner that Tarbox had mistaken the home for his friend's house. <laughs> As it would happen. You know, that would just happen. <laughs> you would be sitting there and you'd go, yeah, yeah, this was totally not This my does house. seem like the setup. This is when, when you described your friend's house. It's very close. Very close. I get it. Uh, then Tarbox <laughs> reportedly asked the homeowner to drive him to another home in Hollis. The resident thought the scenario was unusual, but plausible. So he agreed to drive the man to his house, to a house in Hollis. York County Sheriff King, Bill King told the Portland Press Herald, he said he wanted to get the man out of his house. <laughs> <laughs> so he agreed to drive him home. When the homeowner got back home, he noticed that his back door had been forced open. And there were various items missing. When he returned home and inspected his house further, he found his back door had been forced open, food missing from his refrigerator, and signs the house had been ransacked. Deputies soon learned that the main police, state police that Tarbox had allegedly stolen a vehicle in Portland and then ran out of gas in Hollis. He later stole another vehicle and drove it until he crashed it in the woods. He then walked to the caller's home, broke in through the rear door, and had a bite to eat, showered, and watched a little television before the confrontation by the right for tenant. <laughs> a tip from one of Tarbox's relatives led investigators to him and authorities arrested him without incident. He was still reportedly wearing the clothes that belonged to the homeowner when he was accused of burgl- burglarization. That's fantastic. That is really just yeah. amazing to me that you have the, the balls to 
to do that. Yeah. All that shit. And just lay around in its clothes. This guy's <laughs> pants are nice. <laughs> this is like, yeah. yo, man, I thought it was, I thought it was my friend's house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my friend's pants are great. You know, like. <laughs> and I think that if you were there, you know, to me, I'm gullible. So if the guy's convincing enough, if he believes it enough, maybe I might believe him too. Right. I don't know. I don't know. It seems a little... I would definitely want him out of my house, so I would definitely probably take him wherever he wanted to go. Yeah. Because um, I was saying, it seems a little crazy. I mean, like ludicrous. <laughs> right. You know? And, yeah, but he's wearing his clothes and yeah. shit. I don't know any friend I have. You know, you're probably about as close to friend as I got. <laughs> Um, we're not that close though, you know? Yeah, if I, I broke in your house, I, I would steal many things, but I wouldn't put on your clothes. And Dad's going to go, I'm afraid. <laughs> Just laying there, yeah. hanging out. Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, Today, I'm Frank. He's not here. I'm putting his shirt on. I I, was, I'm going to go put liquor on a shelf. <laughs> Just take <laughs> my job. Hey. Oh, that would be hilarious. Hey. Hi, I'm the new Frank. <laughs> Hello. Hey, how you I'm, doing? They would probably just fucking let you come out. Yeah. Um, anyways, let's move on to my, my last little tale here. Uh, Dutch court rules 69-year-old man can't legally declare himself 20 years younger. A, uh, a 69-year-old Dutch, Dutch man has failed to, in his attempt to legally declare himself 20 years younger. Last month, motivational speaker Emil Rattleband filed a lawsuit against the Dutch government requesting that his date of birth be switched from March 11th, 1949 to March 11th, 1969. On Monday, a court in the Netherlands city of Arnhem rejected his age-changing application, saying that while Rattleband is at liberty to feel 20 years younger than his real age and to act accordingly, actually changing the birth certificate is not possible. Amending his date of birth would cause 20 years of records to vanish from the <laughs> register of births, deaths, marriages, and registered partnerships. <laughs> uh, this would have a variety of undesirable legal and social so implications, the court said. <laughs> this guy says, I feel much younger than my age. I I am a young god. I can have all the girls I want, but not after I tell them that I am 69. <laughs> <laughs> Why not just lie? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That is, a, that is some fucking funny shit. Yeah, that's great. I'll tell you what. So he got, his whole thing is like, look, it, this age thing is getting the way I'm getting laid. Well, he... He said he also well he also said I feel young I am in great shape and I want this to be legally recognized because because I feel abused aggrieved and discriminated against because of my age. He then compared his attempt to turn back the clock to identifying as transgender. Yeah. Uh yeah, I don't want to say on that one other than uh <laughs> cuckoo. <laughs> yeah, it's not the same, sir. Yeah. It's just not the same. And um you know, just just you'll meet someone. You know, <laughs> somebody just, that won't care. They love you yeah, for you, not because no you hang with Steve Buscemi. At yeah, all. Steve Bruschetta. <laughs> and you're, I mean, sixty nine. It's an age, you know. Whatever. Yeah. It's, some would say it's the best age. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the sex number. I totally. Uh, I if I was him, I wouldn't give a fuck. But hey. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that's the whole thing, man. With uh, people, uh, people want to. Change, like they find some small thing they don't like about themselves and then they try to compare it to transgender yeah. situations which first of all if you're not a transgender person you probably shouldn't really speak on that since you have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> you have no about. idea what it's like yeah. you don't know the experience at all it's uh, stay out of it like like me I'm gonna stay out of it um, <laughs> but you can't just compare like I want to change my race or I want to change my age yeah uh, we're starting to get in this crazy phase where people are <laughs> I mean, science is science and fact is fact. Right. The fact is, scientifically, you're 69 years old. The fact is, scientifically, you're born with a male or a female genitalia, biologically. I, everything else about it after that, if you're a grown adult, I could give a fuck what you say or do. Right. But the facts are facts. I just wanted to say yeah. that. Yeah, well, so, yeah. you do whatever you want. But I mean, <laughs> and it doesn't affect me, and I have no opinion on the laws you set. But in my head... I don't care what you call yourself or identify with. If you were born a man, you're a man. If you were born a woman, you're a, you're a woman. There's no nonsense is, in between. Yeah. It is this basically yeah. true. I don't care. And yeah. I, it, the, the that's biology. I, that's not me. Is it just me? I, I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm probably. I, I always seem to sound like I, I'm like. I anymore. I seem like I don't know who I am anymore. Yeah. Because I'll say stuff like I'm about to say, and I'm like, that is how I feel, but it doesn't sound right. Um. I, 
I, I hate it whenever people say my pronouns are. <laughs> yeah, I do too. They and that, whatever. Yeah. Listen, tell me your name. I'll call you that. <laughs> yeah. And and then we, if I fuck up after that, if I can't tell, just let it f- slide. You know, yeah. just, you can call me uh, whatever you want. Uh, you can call me Al. You can call me Al. You can call me. You can call me. me, Al. me no, 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 no. <laughs> you can call me whatever gender or race you want to call me. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why we're all caught up, caught up in this shit. I know I'm just a white guy um, without any real... Dis- that's that's the thing. No one gives a fuck where we're from because we're white guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, fuck us, but for real. I don't, honestly, I would not... I would not... Yeah. I would not want to parse that. Because I've never been to a party with a bunch of interesting people and had an, <laughs> you know, like a foreign person come up to me and go... <laughs> Uh, where are you from? Because they just assume. <laughs> right. Oh, you're obviously from here. Hey, right. Anyway, hey, white guy, how's it going? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's so weird when people are so like, you know, like they meet somebody like, oh, where are you from? I'm from fucking Detroit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? You know what? That's what we yeah. do. They do say, where are you from? Yeah. Maybe we should start doing that. Like, oh, no, Deutschland a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's some Deutsch, maybe a little uh, <laughs> You know, English. Or maybe we should all do that. What's that? What's that? Uh, the the you pay money and you get your background. What's that called? Oh, Forever yeah. twenty one. <laughs> Forever twenty one. That's <laughs> not what it is. No, that's not what it is. That's a clothing store for ladies. <laughs> whatever. But, whatever uh, that that, that uh, yeah, ancestry dot com. Ancestry one two three four or whatever. Like, maybe we should all just do that. And then someone's like, well, where are you from? And you'd be like, well, let me yeah. show you. Let me swipe on, this is my, this ent- it's, it's on my phone. <laughs> yeah. My ancestors. Well, I got a little bit of Poland. Yeah. Uh, I'm about 15%. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I would love that. I would love people to just carry that shit around for the motherfuckers that say that they're Native American. Yeah. I, I love that. I mean. There's so many people that are like, well, I am slightly Native American. Everybody's well, Everybody's family. a little bit. Yeah. I mean. Everybody has somebody in their family that they've grown up with. If you're a yeah. white guy or a girl, that yeah. goes, oh, you know, there's some Native American heritage in our family. Of course there is. We <laughs> came here from another world yeah. and fucked them and killed them. Of course we did this. It's in there a little yeah. bit. Like, if you look at pictures of my grand, my grandpa's grandma, she looked like a Native American. She smoked a cigar. She was a gruff looking, she looked like a Native American woman. Right. But myself, I would never claim any of it. I would never say I'm 10%, 15%, because I don't fucking know. And I'm definitely not that much of a Native American to uh, claim any sort of Right. Benefits from it, I, like like I, I don't want to learn about those the heritage of it. You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> did you know on my one one tenth side of Native American Navajo, we used to do what you know whatever you know. It's tradition for my family tradition. to make bowls like, out of. Oh great! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a not annoying at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I would love. I would love. Um, there a couple. Of, oh, another thing I wanted to talk about while we're just recording here. Um, <laughs> you, you, a lot of people on these podcasts they'll promote these um, box meal things, right? Like uh, 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 what, Hello Fresh is the one I'm specifically talking about because yeah. uh, my wife was like, "Let's sign up for that. Let's try it out for a month." I want to I want to bitch about it a little bit. I, I really I, there's nothing wrong with the products. What they send you is fine. It's yeah. Fresh fresh food. It tastes good. Yeah. It's uh, everything's wacky. Like everything's like a crazy fucking thing. It's not just a burger meal. It's like a burger with a special kind of relish kind of thing. It's something weird that you would, if you were looking at a menu, you'd be like, it's kind of, I might like that. I don't know. Everything's special. Everything's like a, such a special thing. Even the sides. <laughs> Instead of just French fries, it's sweet potato fries that you got to cut yourself. Cutting a sweet potato is fucking sucks. I don't know yeah, if you've ever done it. I have actually. But basically, uh, the pro- one, of the pro- one of the problems is... Uh, it's kind of like how Netflix used to be with DVDs. You'd go and you'd select the DVDs you want, and then eventually they'd come to you. Right. But by the time they came, do you want to watch them? Not really. Right. Get around to it. So what this is like is like looking at a menu from a restaurant where all the food's prepared. And uh, you're like, oh, well, that'll be good. We'll, we'll order these four things. These will come. This will be our trial month. Right. So it comes to you. And once it gets there, then you have to want to eat it because it's all fresh. Mm-hmm. And then you have to want to make it. Okay. I was sick and my wife was sick. The first deliveries we got, 
we didn't feel like making it. So we put it in the fridge. It is no longer Hello Fresh. It's Hello Frozen because we had to freeze part of it. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> so then we bring it out and make it. It's all right. I wouldn't, if I ordered it in a restaurant, I wouldn't order it again. You know? <laughs> so that's my problem with it. Uh, I just wanted people to know my honest opinion about this service <laughs> because you hear about it on a lot of podcasts. They, they say, you know, it's great. It, it's like cooking with your family. It, no, it's a pain in the ass. You, it's not easy. It's not like a put together thing that you just throw in the oven. It's a whole, you have to cut every fucking thing. <laughs> you have to put every, it's, a, it's doing a thing. It's like for people that want to, if you, this is who it's for. If you want to pretend that you know what you're doing in the kitchen, this is what it's for. This is what it's for. They'll send you all the things you need and tell you how to do it. And then you can feel like you're on America's Top Chef or whatever. Right. I don't want to do that. No. I, I, mean, that I, I, I told Martha, cancel it now. Yeah. We have two meals in the fridge we have to make before it goes bad. Yeah. It was not worth it at all. And I want everybody to know that's exactly what it's like. HelloFresh and these box meals, I'm sure they're all the same. They're all probably the same. Are, yeah. They are the Netflix DVD uh, <laughs> system of getting food. Because, like I said, you, ha you have to want to eat it two times. You have to see it made already and be like, and that's where they trick you. They're like, uh -huh. you see it all made up and you're like, you know, really? no, you have to do all that shit. I, yeah, that, you know? I have no interest <laughs> in that. <laughs> it's like... Uh, I, whenever she got opened up the box, I was like, oh my God, that's an immense amount of work that's there. Because you got to, I'm like, they don't even chop the fucking tomatoes for you? Come on, dude. Right. And some stuff they expect you to have, like butter and, you know, uh, staples. Right. That, you know? Like, oh, it's, this says <laughs> canola oil. I haven't had that in a while. Right. <laughs> yeah. Canola oil. It's just weird. Yeah. I just wanted to talk about it. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Before? Um. Well, I, yeah, I guess I could just, since this is a new episode, I could. Uh, yeah. I just saw Us today, Jordan Peele's new horror film. Right. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be talking about it in the coming weeks because it's it's going to be controversial. Thing, yeah. It is not... You're either going to like this movie or hate it because it's got one of those shamalami twists that you kind of see coming when you yeah. start the movie. And when it happens, you're like, oh, <coughs> the rest of this is that. And right. there's no going back. So if you're... Depends on your taste. If you like that kind of stuff, you might be totally into it. I liked it. I just thought it was a solid B movie, uh, great acting, um, but the story left a little to be desired for me. Like right. I would have expounded on some stuff, but it was fun to watch. I know it's making a crap ton of money right now, and a lot of people are it's sitting at like ninety four percent on Rotten Tomatoes, mm -hmm. which critics love it. So the guy and the guy's good. I, I'm looking forward to his new Twilight Zone yeah. that he's doing. But it, I just want to get out there like these critics are going, oh, these new horror films are a new crop of the genre. It wasn't a horror movie. It had yeah. horror movie elements, but it was a psychological thriller with sci-fi. Yeah. And I hate now that, that we're not distinguishing this stuff anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, 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 it is. It did, from what I saw, it seemed more like a supernatural thriller. Yeah. Um, which does fall into the horror category. Right, but it's not. Uh, it's clearly meant to be your classic type of thriller with, with a scary element. You know what right. I mean? Horror movies have certain staples, and they, they touch on they make They're literally talking about it in the movie, like making light of some of those tropes. But at the same time... It's it can't be classified as a horror movie because it's more of a thriller. So it really is with sci-fi elements. So I don't know. Like I'm kind of getting a little bit on edge. Like I get I love that people are doing new stuff and having new ideas, but you know you expect a horror film when you when you hear somebody go, "This is a horror film," you know, right. not, not something that's a hybrid. You know, I ha I've <laughs> had a problem with that for. For, for for like probably five six years, yeah. the the misidentification of what is a horror movie, and in fact, um, with his last one, what was his last movie? Uh, uh, Get Out. Get Out. Yeah, that won an award for comedy, right? Uh, I thought it was screenplay. I, yeah. I, I don't. They categorized it in a weird way. Yeah. They don't know what. The, they don't know how to categorize anything. Um, I, the, the the here's the thing I have a problem with. I listen to. A, the Unspooled podcast. Have you heard that? It's they're going through the AFI top oh, 100 yeah, yeah. films. Uh, you told you actually suggest that. Uh, they're going through this list and they've hit two fucking Marx Brothers movies already. There's this is the top 100. Mm -hmm. 
uh, how is there two Marx Brothers movies on there? Yeah. How is there two John Wayne movies on there? You know, like people our age, yeah. we barely remember them. You know right. what I mean? Like yeah. we, we weren't around for it, but we are familiar with the uh, connotations of them or, or the references because we grew up with parents whose parents watched it. Right. right? So they we're at the tail end of that. These kids now, I had a kid at work tell me he's young, like 21 years old. Oh, I don't watch old movies. It was something from 1991. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> well, yeah, if you talk to anybody who's in their like early 20s, um, it, they are just now discovering stuff that I thought was common yeah. film knowledge, you know, like things that, but of course, you know, we were watching shit like Mad Men back when we were 17 years old, you know, I would spend my whole weekend watching all kinds of videotapes and anything I could get my hands on. Yeah. So, uh, Maybe we were just studying more on our own, I guess. I guess, yeah, it's because we had to go physically go get stuff. This is right. really my theory on this. If you could have just picked what you wanted to watch, you wouldn't have really branched out. Right. But going to something like a blockbuster video when we were kids, you go for something specific, they were out of it, you'd have to pick something else or your trip was wasted. Oh, yeah. So I, I watched so many movies that I would have never watched, you know what I mean, if oh, I yeah. could just stream whatever I wanted. Yeah, so, and I, I think, think it is. It made us more worldly i feel and with with television also at this at the time we had to you even if you had cable you were limited to what was on cable right you know? uh and we, I, we, ha we had like the most expansive satellite system when i was in uh high school middle school uh we had all the channels you know um mm -hmm. and still you were still limited to what was on yeah so um <laughs> basically you could have you know 500 different channels but how many of those things had something you wanted to watch on it? Right. So a lot of times it wasn't just compromise. Yeah. In general, um, with everyday viewing. So I saw I saw a lot of old movies too, like super old, like um, for example, uh, Grapes of Wrath. Right. You know, like it's on Turner Classic Movies or whatever that was back when I was in high school, and my dad's like, "You should watch that. You probably like it." Yeah. And we watched it. You know. Well, I didn't go select that one, but it was one that I was like, oh, that's all I could watch, you know, right, yeah. that day. Yeah, and it just like one of my favorite movies ever. And who's, if you're a young person, who's even barely oh, yeah. familiar with the book, probably, because yeah. you had to hear about it in high school. Yeah, and uh, and even mandatory reading in high school and stuff is completely whacked. Whacked out. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. That, that, you know, and I think that the way we had to struggle to get any little thing we could find that led me to really enjoying things that I probably wouldn't have if it was just my own accord. Because, you know, like uh, one of my favorite movies is Popeye with Robin Williams. Robin right? Williams, yeah. People will shit on that movie all the time. But it's got a Harry Nilsson soundtrack that's awesome. All the songs are great. Um, if you can find on YouTube, you can listen to all of the, the demos and stuff. It's just Harry Nilsson doing the songs. Um, but when I watched that, we had a black and white TV in this, in our room where, where all our toys and shit were, right? Yeah. With an antenna, with the old dial that you could get. And so I sat there and f finally got the TV in, and that movie was just starting. So I watched it in black and white, and on commercial breaks, I'd turn the Atari on, play some River Raid, go back to <laughs> it. And that has always been one of my favorite movies, just because of, like, that's my memory of seeing it, and yeah. then I bought it several times, and it's just... It may be stupid to a lot of people, but that's probably one of my favorite Robin Williams movies. Um, I, I uh, it has its merits. I I don't hate it, you know, but like right. it's not. It's not I can see. I, I can see. It. I can yeah. see how my opinion is yeah. completely different from a lot of people's on that. But you know, I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I was by myself. There was that was a moment that I was like, I'm having fun. Yeah, and, you know, like, and then every time it's just good times are associated with that movie <laughs> and me. So. Uh, yeah, get drunk and watch Popeye. That's what I can say. I agree. <laughs> Anyways, we should wrap this up. Uh, all right. Well, we'll see you next time, guys. Check out uh, all the podcasts on ZTO TV uh, podcast. Podcasting. <laughs> what is it? ZTO TV podcasts. Podbean. Com. Or just look up ZTO TV on whatever the hell you listen to podcasts on. We should be on there. Or hit Control Alt Delete on your computer <laughs> twice. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll see you later.